Hello, I'm Nicolette Pomba Fanseo, editor of ESI Africa magazine, coming to you from the African Utility Week studio. Today I'm speaking to Anthony Lawrence, who is an industry expert in the energy and uh, environment uh, with Frost and Sullivan. Uh, welcome, Anthony. Thank you. You've, you've been attending a lot of the sessions here at African Utility Week uh, around water specifically. And I think that is a, a very uh, key focus that we should be uh, looking at in terms of the energy, water and food nexus. What are the things in particular that have come out during those sessions? Well, it's been a very um, interesting past two days, I must admit. Um, I think it's a topic that needs to be talked about more and more. Um, the water sector doesn't get the amount the same amount of exposure say the energy sector does but I think to answer your question um, two main discussions that we've had has been one on the opportunities for desalination but also to understand where the opportunities are for private sector when working with the public sector De desalination uh, in my understanding is very expensive is this uh, a, really a solution we should be looking at? Well, from what I've been learning recently and over the past few years at Frost & Sullivan is that, yes, desalination can be seen as costly. The initial capital cost is, is pretty high. Mm -hmm. However, research is starting to show that the cost later down the line is actually not so... Um, how do you put it? Uh, it it's, it's more pal palatable when you start looking at what's available in terms of surface water. Um, desalination needs to be considered at points where um, it shouldn't be seen as an it, it shouldn't be seen as an emergency solution. It should be rather let's look at it as a long-term plan. So yes, the cost may look high to start with, but in fact, compared to surface water costs, not so high. So besides desalination, um, uh, what are the things that uh, we can do in order to conserve and protect our water resource? Okay, so there's a lot of talk about a concept of non-revenue water. Now, non-revenue water, by many people's understanding, is a measure on utilities' efficiencies and they, their health. Um, a non-revenue water percentage talks about how much water is being lost through systems, uh, commercial losses, natural losses, um, losses that could be built. Okay, so perhaps w ways to reduce water wastage would be to focus on non-revenue water and try and find more efficient ways of not losing the water through the system. Um, interesting concept that was brought in in today's presentation um, from a, a gentleman named Adrian uh, Kurtz from the city of Trane. They're bringing out a solution that, or well, it's a case study rather, of a solution that can introduce um, hydropower through a conduit system. Now, what's interesting about that is that you can generate power with available water in the reservoirs, already earned. That power can be used to help the operations for the municipality to manage the water effectively and hopefully um, reduce the costs on water. And that's an, another measure or solution in place to try and help uh, manage water more efficiently. I think that that, that is a concept uh, that is being used overseas yes. and uh, introducing it into the South African market is uh, definitely the way to go. Um, I think people don't realize that the cost of water is a lot around the distribution of it, the treatment of it. Mm. Did uh, any of any solutions um, come up in the discussions around the treatment of water? Um, I haven't heard too much on solutions for the treatment of water, but more, I guess, yes, in the sense of operational costs, yes, mm. the power that is needed or the electricity that is needed to manage and to treat the water, yes but not much on the sort of the chemicals that are used. Um, but I think the big discussion point and perhaps quite controversial is how do we price water? It's been the argument for many years and it's a global argument um, because water is a basic necessity. 
and before, uh, before you start implementing rules about how much you charge for water, you've got to understand, okay, we've got basic needs. Um, and often we are paying for the actual service to get the water as opposed to the actual product itself. Um, so it'll be interesting to see after today's discussion and with tomorrow's discussions where what people are going to be saying post the events of Africa Utility Week. Right. So um, as a, a last message, um, what is it that really inspired you about the different conference sessions you have been in? I think what has inspired me has been the discussion that we've got both public and private participants in one room. Um, we all seem to be talking about the same things, which means that we either aligned or we've been aligned for a long time but no one's doing anything about it. Um, there's a lot of red tape from what I understand which doesn't inspire me, but it does uh, suggest that we are trying to find ways to get better partnerships in place. And I've learned that from the keynote presentations that um, yesterday, a, I think they call an African proverb was mentioned that if you want to get somewhere fast, you can do it on your own. If you want to get somewhere far, or go far rather, you've got to do it as a group or as a, in a partnership. And that has been fleshed out quite a lot over the past two days. I'm sure it'll be fleshed out even more tomorrow and later in the week. But I think that's what inspires me, is that we are all in the same room, both public and private, and we can be together to try and solve and find a solution for the water needs. Oh, it's a very good message to end on, and I look forward to hearing what comes out of tomorrow's sessions. Well, thank you. Thank you for watching. I'm Nicolette Pomba Pansail, editor of ESI Africa, coming to you from the African Utility Week studio.